In my previous punch-out video, we saw just how many punches were needed to beat Mike Tyson's punch-out using the optimal strategies in each fight and getting perfect RNG. Luckwise, the worst fight in that run was Don Flamenco 2, which required odds of 1 in 32,768. If we did end up getting that luck though, it was possible to beat him in just 11 punches. Back in 2013, McHazard unveiled his first TAS of the game, which saw improvements on 8 of the 14 fights and completely blew away every single MTPO speedrunner, which at the time were just Sinister 1 and Zalad 1. Seven years later, in 2020, McHazard improved upon it again, getting faster times on 3 more fights, and the fights became even more ridiculous and precise. The 1 in 32,768 odds to beat Don 2 in as few punches as possible are definitely not great. But how do they stack up to each fight in the tool assisted speedrun of Mike Tyson's punch out? In this video, I'll break down every single fight and we will see just how insanely far humans are from matching the TAS in this game. Before we begin, I want to go over the timing method briefly. Most games are timed using a real timer, but the general convention in Mike Tyson's punch out is to use the in game timer. The reasoning behind this is simple to reduce unnecessary randomness. The simplest example of this is when an opponent is getting counted out and they perform a fake getup. This sort of time loss adds absolutely nothing difficulty wise or extra challenge for the player, so the in-game timer is just much better for a game with enough RNG in it, even if there are other quirky things with the clock. There is one other little thing I want to mention about the clock, and that is to do with the decimal value. When you see your final time at the end of the fight, the final time given can only have decimal values of 0 .00, 0 0 0.00, 0 0.25, 0 0.48, 0 0.61, 0 0.82, 0 0.97, and 0.99. With the exception of 0.99, which is one frame, or sometimes zero frames, all the other decimal values span over several frames. This means it is possible to tie the task in most fights without actually playing to the same exact precision of the TAS. Out of the 14 fights in the game, 3 of the fights can be matched to the TAS every single time as RNG doesn't play a meaningful factor. The first of these fights is Glass Joe. One of the most well-known strategies in this franchise is the 42 second victory over Glass Joe. When he backs up to perform his special attack at 40 seconds, there is a 4 frame window where if you land a punch, Glass Joe will be knocked out and you will be awarded the victory. However, to tie the TAS, your punch needs to connect on either one of the first 2 frames of that 4 frame window. If you land on frame 3 or 4, the fight will end with a decimal of 0.25. So one nice thing about Glass Joe is that we can actually lose one frame from perfect play and still tie the perfect run. As nice as this little cushion is, you will soon see that it doesn't really help all that much in the grand scheme of things. And besides, we have a buffer strategy to get a perfect fight every single time. From here, we can go into the second fight where the task time can be guaranteed. Don Flamenco 1. If you watched my how many punches are needed to beat Mike Tyson's punch out video, you will be very familiar with the start of this strategy. Don's defense is impregnable, and the only way to begin dealing any damage to him is to dodge one of his punches and counter punch. We do this by beginning the fight, buffering a left gut punch. Little Mac has 4 basic punches he can perform. The left and right face punches, and the left and right gut punches. At the highest level of playing this game, each of them is slightly different and has their own niche uses. For the most part, both the left and right face punches are basically the same, both dealing the same amounts of damage in equivalent scenarios and both being performed at the same speed. However, the left and right gut punches are quite different from each other. For starters, the right gut punch deals 5 damage in most cases, similar to either face punch. On the other hand, the left gut punch only deals 4 damage. However, at the cost of that 1 damage, the left gut punch is faster by 2 frames, so naturally, where that 1 damage can be sacrificed, the left gut punch is preferred. Which is exactly why the first punch on Don Flamenco 1 must be a left gut punch. 
After that buff had left Gut Punch to force Don to retaliate with an uppercut, we need to land a frame perfect punch so we can get a star. Zalad1 discovered a very convenient buffer, just a slow left dodge, a left quick dodge, and then a face punch. This punch lands on the last possible frame before Don returns to normal. Without this buffer, the punch we need to land is extremely difficult, just 1 60th of a second. After we get the star, we buffer a star punch and knock Don down for the first time. Don can get up here with several different counts, ranging from a 2 count to an 8 count, which is another reason why using a real timer is extremely dumb. But one thing is certain, is that since we are at full health, and less than 1 minute has elapsed, Don will only get up with 16 health. Don returns to the fight, and will immediately perform another uppercut. To get the lowest possible time, we need to perform a frame perfect left quick dodge. Along with each punch being slightly different, each dodge in this game is also different. The slow left and slow right dodges are, well, slow, so they basically have no practical purpose in terms of getting the lowest possible times. The right quick dodge and left quick dodge look very similar, but going frame by frame, you will be able to see that the right quick dodge has an additional 2 frames of animation as Matt comes back to the center, and thus, the next move Matt can perform will be 2 frames later. Because of this, the right quick dodge is seldom used and is really only practical in some specific buffers. We need to perform this left quick dodge on a very specific frame, and the reason for that is so we can get rapid punches immediately. Rapid punches actually freeze the clock for a few frames each time you land one, so not only are they just faster in general, they literally stop time. If you dodge any later than the optimal frame, you will end up getting a final time of 14.99 or 15 seconds flat. And if you dodge too early, you will have to land a few slow punches before you can get rapid punches, which ends up costing you even more time. If this fight is done perfectly, you will end up getting a final time of 14.97. Now, the third fight in which we can guarantee the task time. Great Tiger. Getting a perfect time of 47.48 on Great Tiger is a great deal tougher than Glass Joe and Don Flamenco 1. In a full game speedrun, the strategy is to force him to jab by punching him in the face, which gets blocked, and then we can land a cheeky right gut punch, which has a 6 frame window, where we can get guaranteed stars. With a pre-planned route for all the punches, we can get a time as low as 47.99. The TAS uses almost the exact same strategy except for one key difference. Instead of using right gut punches to get the stars, face punches are used instead. The one big difference is that the face punch is frame perfect, and they must be manually timed. There is no buffer. You begin the fight forcing 3 jabs and landing 3 frame perfect face jabs in response to get 3 stars. 2 star punches are then buffered consecutively, which is simple enough. Then, you must force a 4th jab and land a 4th frame perfect punch for another star. Once that 4th frame perfect punch is landed, you're basically in the clear. A neat left quick dodge buffer can be used to land a face punch into his gem flash for a 5th star, and this buffer only loses 1 frame to the TAS. To end phase 1, we can perform this buffer which lands a star punch into the first frame of another one of Tiger's gem flashes, and we will get our first knockdown. The final two phases are completely trivial. Since the clock is still under 1 minute and Little Mac is still at full health, Tiger will get up on the count of 1. When an opponent gets up on the count of 1, a star punch will immediately send them back to the canvas. Since we planned phase 1 in such a way to end with 2 stars, we simply use both stars to get the second and third knockdown and end with a final time of 47.48. And luckily, we had that one frame to spare. Now. You are probably wondering about something. I know during the Don 1 explanation, I said face punches are slower compared to both the left and right gut punches. That is true, except it's a little different when you factor in the getting a star animation. When you factor in getting a star, right gut punches are now the slowest of the three. Left gut punches are a little faster, but remember they only deal 4 damage. And surprisingly, on some fights, Face punches are one frame faster than left gut punches, 
and also steal Dill 5 damage. Even with the 4 difficult frame perfect punches, there is another barrier that holds many back from getting a time of 47.48. How fast fights can be retried. Joe was the first fight in the game, so we can obviously retry him very quickly. And Don Juan is the first fight in the major circuit, which can be accessed with a passcode, which the game conveniently stores for us upon a soft reset. Great Tiger on the other hand is the third fight in the major circuit and has no passcode. You must fight Don Juan and King Hippo first, and then you have two consecutive shots at Great Tiger. On your second consecutive loss, you will get sent back to King Hippo, and on your third loss, you get a game over and are sent back to the title screen. If you think this is rather inconvenient, you're 100% right. But Mike Tyson's punch-out speedrunners are purists. Anything that is not in the vanilla game is not allowed. That means no save states can be used to access fights faster in order to record a legitimate attempt. Nevertheless, even with these strict rules, the time of 47.48 has been tied by over a dozen people. Well, that's all for the times which can be guaranteed. Now, we have to take our first step into the waters of RNG, beginning with the 8th fight in the game, Piston Honda 2. Wait a sec, let me move this over. Yeah, this is gonna be good. The fight begins with a guard raise and a left gut punch immediately followed by a face punch. This two punch combo is known as a Dizzy Destroyer and was invented by the one and only Matt Turk. After the first Dizzy Destroyer, another Dizzy Destroyer is performed and we can get our first guaranteed star. Now, we must perform a very special star punch known as a guard manipulated max damage star punch. We must press up and start exactly 4 frames after seeing Piston Honda's idle animation. Furthermore, you must release up somewhere between 12 and 16 frames later. If you try and perform this manoeuvre any earlier, Honda's guard won't be manipulated. And if you perform it even 1 frame later, the punch will do much less damage. Technically, there is a larger window a little later to land the star punch for max damage again, but at that point, you are wasting far too much time. After this, you must perform a third Dizzy Destroyer and also get a random star on the face punch. And again we wait exactly 4 frames and perform another guard manipulated max damage star punch. Now during all this time, Honda has just been standing there, letting us mash him in the gut and face. But he is about to perform his first move, wiggling his eyebrows followed by 3 consecutive jabs. We hold up to raise his guard and wait 4 frames to press start again, but this time, you must release up at most 7 frames after you have pressed start. With Honda at extremely low health, we just buffer a face punch to score our first knockdown at 23 seconds. This phase 1 is the ultimate test of skill on Piston Honda 2. Even if you were just looking to get a very good time near the TAS, this phase is not for you. If you lose more than 1 frame, the end of the phase doesn't quite work properly and Honda's gut will be in a position which makes the fight impossible to continue. Okay, so that's the hard part. Now, for the other hard part. Phase 2 begins with a simple buffered face punch for another guaranteed star. Once again, we must perform another delay to land another garb manipped max damage star punch. One more dizzy destroyer with a random star on the second punch, and a fourth guard manipped max damage star punch for the knockdown, provided Honda got up with the low refill. Phase 3 is conveniently a one count. A single star punch is what separates us from our victory. But that doesn't mean it's easy. If you simply try to buffer this star punch, Honda will dodge because he is in his dodging mode, which inconveniently gets activated after we have used enough star punches. However, we can prevent him by dodging it by, you guessed it, making it a guard manipped max damage star punch. So what was needed to achieve this time? Well, to put the whole thing into perspective, there are four moves that are strictly frame perfect. In other words, if you mess them up, the run is dead. From there, there are 6 potential areas to lose frames, and you only have 1 frame to spare. Most of these are on guard races to perform dizzy destroyers, which require a frame perfect up release, followed by a frame perfect B press. This brings the total number of frame perfect inputs required to 13, and I haven't even mentioned the plethora of other slightly bigger windows that need to be hit. After all of that, you will only get the luck 1 8th of the time. Along with Mike Tyson, this fight was seen as a pinnacle of mastery of execution within the realm of Mike Tyson's punch-out speedrunning. Each element of the fight was understood pretty well. 
The RNG required wasn't too bad, but the level of precision required seemed to be a little beyond the reach of any person. Nevertheless, in May of 2020, Summoning Salt was the first person to pull off the strategy and managed to tie the task time, with Jailer and Hefeman following suit. Heading back to the minor circuit and the second fight in the game, we are up against Von Kaiser. When speedrunners complete this fight in a full game run, the best time you will see is a 35.97. In McHazard's TAS, the final time of this fight ends up being 35.61. Ironically, this time is only achievable by delaying one of your punches by one frame. Let's take a look. The task begins with a buffered face punch and a series of left gut punches with a couple of simple guard manipulations so he doesn't block. After the fifth left gut punch, the task delays a single frame and performs a face punch. In full game runs, instead of delaying one frame and performing a face punch, we just perform another left gut punch. The reason for the delayed face punch is to manipulate Von Kaiser's move timer. By delaying one frame, this punch now connects into one of his jabs, which resets the move timer and our following face punch, which gets the first start, now lands in between two of his jabs. Since this lets the move timer tick a little closer to the next jab, we barely have to delay before ducking, stunning him and sending him to the canvas with a star punch. Without this delayed face punch, we have to wait a handful of frames longer for him to throw his jab. The face punch that gets delayed by one frame is not all there is to it though. Most of the time, Von Kaiser will either block or duck that punch. The chance for that punch to connect properly is only 47 in 256, or just slightly below 3 in 16. For the rest of the fight, the TAS does nothing different compared to what humans do in a full game run. Phase 2 begins with Von Kaiser getting up on a 1 count, a small guard manipulation to land 2 consecutive left gut punches with a random 50% start on the second punch, and then a star punch to knock him down. And phase 3 is just a simple duck and star punch to secure the win. This fight only has two random events, the 47 in 256 face punch and the random 50% star in phase 2, bringing the odds to 47 in 512, or about 1 in 10.89. Execution wise, the task could lose 2 frames and still manage to get the time of 35.61. On the second punch of the fight, the task actually performs a 1 frame delay to land a left gut punch. However, because the entire fight has two frames of leeway, humans prefer to use a buffered right gut punch, which ends up being one frame slower overall, and then playing the rest of the fight with one more frame to lose. In comparison to Piston Honda 2, this fight has far fewer points of failure. There are only four spots where a human could really lose time. Even with the slightly lower odds, and the longer time spent between potential attempts, far more people have managed to successfully tie the task time. We now dive deeper into the realms of RNG, with possibly one of the most notorious fights in the game, King Hippo. Back in the day of Mike Tyson's Punch-Out speedrunning, King Hippo was known as the first gatekeeper to your run. The only way to begin doing damage to him is to wait for him to open his mouth. If your face punch connects within the first 5 frames of his mouth opening, you get a little extra damage on the first punch and also get an extra gut punch. If you manage to do this 3 times, King Hippo can be defeated in under 40 seconds and this is known as a 3 cycle. Unfortunately, on any given punch, King Hippo is only programmed to open his mouth 3 eighths of the time. The odds of getting 3 opens on the first 3 punches are just 27 in 512, but that's not all. In between his second and third punch, there is a potential delay, and to get that optimal result here is 1 in 2. This brings the final odds of the fight to just 27 in 1024, or about 1 in 37.93. McHazard's TAS manages to get a final time of just 37.61, which is still possible if you lose up to 2 frames. Before Lucando and Zoxox found an RNG manipulation in 2019, which guaranteed opens on the first, third, and fourth punches, the best strategy for a full game run was to just do your best with the luck you got. But every now and then, a human would get the near 1 in 40 luck and execute to near perfection. 
Even with these meagre odds, the task time has been tied dozens of times by Zalad1, Summoning Salt and myself in full game runs before 2019. However, because the strategy is so simple and straightforward, several other top players have gone out of their way after the discovery of the RNG manipulation to secure a TAS tie at the top of the leaderboard. That's 6 of the 14 fights down, and those are the only fights where a human has been able to manage to tie the TAS. There are 8 other fights in the game, and now we venture into the realm of things that a human has yet to accomplish, beginning with Mr. Sandman. At the TAS level, Mr. Sandman is the slowest fight in the game, and the only fight that extends past the 2 minute mark. Star punches are not an option in this fight, as they are only available in round 3. However, that doesn't mean he is devoid of those pesky random events. Before the fight even begins, select is pressed to reduce little Mac's health to half. This is done so we can take an intentional knockdown later in the fight. I'll explain why a little later. Sandman begins the first 50 seconds of the fight throwing rolling jabs in groups of 5, and in the pattern right, left, left, right, left. On each of these, up is held, then released as he winds up his punch which we dodge and then land a right gut punch for 5 damage. These gut punches have a 6 frame window to land, but conveniently, you can also land your punch on any of the 6 frames and no time will be lost. This is because for every frame your punch is a little late, the move timer for the next punch is also a frame shorter. On Sandman's 6th punch, there is a potential delay that has 1 in 2 odds. Even though we let this punch hit Mac, we still need the short delay so we don't lose time as the clock ticks over 50 seconds a little later. For the last 4 punches in this set of 5, we repeat as before, raise his guard and counter with a right gut punch. With the pattern reset again, we need to take another hit and we need another short delay, so that's another 1 in 2. Right as we recover from taking the second hit, the clock ticks over 50 seconds, Sandman has a pattern change, and we can start dealing damage a little faster. We can now force Sandman to punch us by throwing a face punch of our own. Sandman will dodge and immediately retaliate with a hook. The task forces one hook, which we dodge, counter and land a delayed right gut punch. And just as before, this delayed gut punch isn't needed to be frame perfect. And in fact, there is a nice right quick dodge buffer for it. Up until here, execution has been pretty trivial, and the odds are only at 1 in 4. However, that is all about to change. For the rest of Phase 1, the task doesn't force any more hooks. By letting Sandman throw his hooks naturally, we can score our first knockdown at the 115 mark, but we also must dodge them without the use of a convenient buffer. Because of this, this is where humans begin to lose some time over the task. Sandman throws a left hook which gets ducked, countered, and delayed punched. Remember, a duck saves one frame over a left quick dodge. After this, there is a 75% chance he goes into the correct pattern, which is two consecutive right hooks. Both are ducked and countered just as before. Now, there is a 50% chance that Sandman will throw his next hook immediately afterwards, which we definitely need to happen. The Tass ducks this hook as well, but since Sandman is at 11 health here, there is an extra little gut punch thrown right before the delayed punch to secure the first knockdown. So far, the odds are up to 3 in 32. Phase 2 begins and we immediately force 2 hooks and counter both, with 2 stun punches before the delayed gut punch on each. At 1 minute 30, Sandman is programmed to wind up for his Dreamland Express. However, after the last set of gut punches, the clock is still at about 129.5. So despite the TAS having played absolutely perfectly up to this point, there are still 8 frames to spare before the clock ticks over to 1 minute 30 to trigger the windup for the DLX. That means, as long as a human plays within 8 frames of perfect up to this point in the fight, they won't actually lose any time. As soon as the clock hits 1.30, he begins winding up for the Dreamland Express. There are 4 possible delays here, and we need the shortest one which is a 1 in 4 chance. The task performs the first quick dodge before there is any indication of when Sandman's attack is coming, and then performs the ultimate ab workout until he is one hit away from knockdown. On the very final hit, there is a frame perfect right gut punch with no buffer, and Sandman goes down for the second time at 151. Sandman has two potential refills here, and we want the lower one, which is 75% likely. When Sandman gets up, we can force another hook, counter twice, and land another delayed punch. Finally, to cap off this section of the fight, we force one more hook and let Matt get hit and we take the knockdown. 
Letting Mac take this knockdown at this point in the fight is crucial. If the clock has ticked a little past 1.59 in round 1, getting up from a knockdown will trigger Mr. Sandman to once again perform his Dreamland Express. And if you saw before, countering the DLX is by far the fastest way to deal damage to Mr. Sandman. Once Little Mac is up, Mr. Sandman will begin winding up for his Dreamland Express. There are two delays here at 50% each. After avoiding Sandman's onslaught again, we can quickly score the third knockdown and the TAS ends with a final time of 216.48. Of the fights that a human has yet to tie the TAS with, Mr. Sandman seems the most likely that a human will manage to tie in the future. The total odds of the fight aren't too bad and come out to 9 in 1024 or about 1 in 114. However, a large problem is retryability. Sandman is one of the latest fights in the game and there is no passcode to attempt him quickly. The fastest way to attempt this fight is to put in the Super Macho Man code, lose to Super Macho Man, get sent back to Don Flamenco 2, beat Don Flamenco 2, and then you have two consecutive shots at Sandman. Despite all of this, in August of 2020, Lucandor set the current world record at 216.82. If we watch this fight closely, he uses a few pseudo buffers to perform some very tight ducks on the hooks leading up to the first knockdown. For the Dreamland Express at 1 minute 30, he uses another buffer which only works if you've wasted those 8 frames you had, although if you waste a few more, the buffer still works, but you will lose time. On the final hit of phase 2, instead of doing the frame perfect delayed right gut punch, Lucandor sacrifices 2 frames to use a buffer and a face punch for the sake of consistency. The final Dreamland Express can be dodged frame perfectly by buffering two preceding quick dodges before the three buffered quick dodges which dodge the three uppercuts. Overall, the fight can be broken down into two sections. The first section is everything that leads up to the first Dreamland Express at 1 minute 30. Since the TAS is 8 frames of leeway, this can all be construed into a single point of failure. From that point onwards though, Everything needs to be done perfectly, as the fight ends on the final frame of the 0.48 increment. Given we have buffers for many other things in the fight, there are only two other points of failure. The frame perfect gut punch to end phase 2, and this delayed gut punch right before we get knocked down also needs to be frame perfect. Lucandor's world record has since been tied twice. Firstly, by Brandon De Silva in January of this year using largely the same ideas and strategies. A few months after this, Hefeman82 fully adopted the TAS strategy and saved those two frames by using the frame perfect gut punch at the end of phase 2. However, it was not enough in the end to set a new untied world record. Considering that almost everything is buffered and there are only 3 points of failure, the odds for the fight aren't too bad at about 1 in 114 and that top runners are capable of pulling off this strategy, it is likely that the task time of 216.48 will be tied by a human sometime in the future. The next fight kicks up the difficulty another notch. Bold Bull 1. This fight is the worst one of them all to go for world record attempts on. Because Bull 1 is the final fight in the major circuit, the most efficient way to attempt him is to put in the Don 1 code and then fight your way through Don, Hippo and Tiger. If you lose to Bull just once, you get sent back to Great Tiger, whom you would have to defeat again just to get another shot. On average, you can fight Bold Bull 3 times every 10 minutes. Bull starts the first 20 seconds of the fight throwing rolling jabs in groups of 2. These jabs can be easily intercepted with one of your face punches. The task begins by buffering 2 face jabs to intercept the first 2 of Bull's rolling jabs, also getting a star on the second punch. A star punch is then buffered to land into the next jab and another face jab is buffered to get another star. Now, we perform a delayed face punch which also needs to get us a random star, which is 50% likely. Another star punch and face punch are buffered intercepting two more of Bull's jabs and another delayed face punch to get another random star. Finally, with Bull at low health, the TAS holds up and buffers a final star punch to get the first knockdown. Up also needs to be released within a 4 frame window to get Bull's Guard in a very particular position for the start of Phase 2. This isn't the fastest way to handle Phase 1 as it is possible to get a 17 second knockdown. The 17 second knockdown is extremely useful for full game runs as it requires no luck and is extremely easy and consistent. 
The 18 second knockdown requires a couple of delayed face punches and two random stars, and is a little tougher to pull off. However, you also exit the phase with one extra star in the bank, which is extremely helpful. There is one other thing that Taz does to sneakily save time. It wastes exactly 4 frames compared to absolutely perfect play. If phase 1 ends too early, Bull will begin phase 2 with a rolling jab because the clock won't have ticked to 20 seconds before the fight resumes. At 20 seconds, Bull has a pattern change, so by allowing the clock to tick to 20 seconds right as the fight resumes, Bull can begin the move timer for his first punch in his new pattern as soon as possible. Phase 2 begins with a buffered face punch. This punch can only be buffered in this way because of the particular position we left Bull's guard in at the end of Phase 1. From here, a star punch is used to intercept the first frame of Bull's hook. When a star punch intercepts a hook early, its damage is decreased a little, but since it also cancels the attack, Bull can begin the timer for his next punch much sooner. A second star punch is then buffered whilst holding up to intercept Bull Bull's hook late. This deals even less damage, but since this star punch can't be used any earlier, it will have to do. This up press also needs to be released within a 4 frame window, which puts Bull's guard in that special state again. This allows the following face punch to be buffered so there are no frames wasted. Now, we are finally up to the punch in the fight that has basically prevented anyone from ever using this strategy. Bold Bull's guard is down due to us landing our previous face punch. We need to raise his guard by holding up, and then release up for exactly one frame to allow his guard to drop, and then perform a face punch which also needs to give us a random star. All of this needs to be done on a particular frame, and I'll show you why in a moment. After that face punch, the rest of the phase is super easy because it's all buffered. Two star punches, followed by three face punches intercepting three rolling jabs getting a random star on the second face punch, and the third securing the knockdown. The reason for that extremely tricky punch needing to be performed on that exact frame is so that we don't allow Bold Bull's move timer to tick any further. If it's not done on the earliest possible frame, then the second star punch lands into the rolling jab, dealing more damage. This ends up getting the knockdown at a 37 instead of a 39, but we have one less star in the bank, and that becomes a much larger issue in phase 3. Furthermore, that rolling jab pattern is not guaranteed. Rolling jabs will only occur 25% of the time after that second hook. So far, the odds for this fight are up to 1 in 64, but there are still two more random events we need to go our way. In Phase 3, Bull has a random refill. He has a 75% chance to get up with a large refill, but only a 25% chance to get up with the lower refill. We need this lower refill in order to get the fastest time. To cap off the final phase in the fight, a star punch is landed into the first frame of his first hook. There is no buffer for this, the best we can guarantee with a buffer is landing it into the second frame. Hook 2 is intercepted with a face punch on the first frame for a guaranteed star, and this time there aren't any buffers that come remotely close to landing near the first frame. If by some miracle a human has got this far, then you are home free execution wise, but if you are unlucky, your dreams will be crushed. Once again, we need that rolling jab pattern, which is 25% likely. After intercepting that second hook, three star punches are buffered and a final face punch to secure the win. The total odds for this fight stack up to 1 in 1024, but that really isn't the major deterring factor to someone trying to pull off this strategy. Retrying this fight is extremely slow and tedious, and that's a major reason why people don't like grinding this fight. And that frame perfect one frame up release up to this point in time, people haven't even really tried to seriously practice it with save states. Since no one has even managed to pull off this strategy, largely due to that face punch in phase 2, who has come the closest? In November of 2021, Brandon De Silva slightly modified the task strategy in order to secure a time of 53.25, which is extremely close to the task time. If his strategy is played optimally, his strategy loses 8 frames in total to the task and can get a time as low as 53.00. Brandon actually played Phase 1 faster than the TAS, which meant that Bold Bull opened Phase 2 with a rolling jab. This does make execution slightly easier, but he ends up losing 6 frames by not wasting those 4 frames in Phase 1. The modification he made in Phase 2, however, was extremely clever. After intercepting the second hook with a star punch, by making the first punch a misdirected gut punch, 
and the second punch remaining a face punch, he completely removed the need to do a one frame up release and the execution becomes substantially easier at the cost of only one frame. With Brandon's clever alteration in phase two and combining that with the very doable TAS phase one, a new world record would surely be achieved one day. As for tying the TAS though, it's still possible to do even with Brandon's adjustment. Just everything needs to be done frame perfectly as there aren't any more frames to spare. Since phase one has intentionally wasted frames, it can be combined into a single frame perfect maneuver. After that, there are five more frame perfect moves and almost everything else is buffered. A human with enough dedication may manage to tie the TAS in this fight one day. What you just saw there was the TAS phase one for Super Macho Man. It almost looks like a game genie code was used to make Macho lose all his brain cells and let little Mac completely wreck him. The details that go into making this fight work are extremely intricate. Let's take a look. In order for this fight to work, we need an extremely particular pattern to occur. If we take a look at this diagram, Macho's pattern starts in the top left box and travels down from there. After the third box, it can loop immediately back to the first box, or can go through the two boxes on the right before looping back to the start. Before we even enter the first box of the fight, the TAS performs a gut punch face punch combo, the same move that was used on Piston Honda 2, the Dizzy Destroyer. Little Mac's third punch is a face punch, and must connect just as Macho tries to perform his first punch, which also needs to be an uppercut. The chance for Macho to perform an uppercut on his first punch is only 25%. That's not all there is to this punch though, because the TAS also intercepts that first uppercut on the last possible frame. For some reason, that messes Macho's guard up just enough so that Little Mac can perform another frame perfect right gut punch to intercept Macho's second uppercut. The chance for Macho to perform an uppercut on his second punch is 75%. Immediately following this, Macho has to perform another uppercut, and the chance of an uppercut occurring on his third punch are 62.5%. This uppercut needs to be intercepted with another one of your face punches. At least this time, your punch doesn't need to be frame perfect, as you have 4 frames to land it. But wait, there's more. You also need a lucky star on this punch, which occurs 37.5% of the time. Now, if we take a look back to the full diagram of Macho's pattern, we're in the bottom left box. From here, he can either loop back to the start, or he can perform two consecutive uppercuts. We need him to go down the right hand path and select the double uppercuts, which is another 62.5% chance. Finally, the TAS lets March perform one of his punches, which we dodge and land a face punch to stun him. If you're wondering why this punch isn't ducked to save one frame, it's because this uppercut has too short of a delay from the previous punch. The duck's animation is longer than either of the quick dodges. The only way it saves a frame is because the gap between the last frame of invulnerability and regaining control of Mac is one frame shorter. After Macho gets stunned, there is another delayed frame perfect gut punch which also cancels the second uppercut. From here, there is a long stretch where Macho just stands still before he performs his mini spin punch. We have enough time to use all three star punches and perform some simple guard manipulations during all three of them so he won't be able to dodge and they will also deal max damage. To cap off this insane phase, the final punch is another frame perfect face punch intercepting Macho's mini spin. However, there was another random event I didn't tell you about. This delay where we land all three star punches is actually variable. The task specifically gets the shortest delay, which is 25%. Yes, the TAS throws a blind frame perfect face punch with no cue into a punch Macho might throw 25% of the time. When I first saw that phase back in 2020, I couldn't quite comprehend what I was seeing. To be honest, trying to slow and break it down to you all was not easy. That phase one is 225 in 32,768 or about 1 in 146, 
and requires no fewer than 4 frame perfect punches. If there is one saving grace about phase 1 of Super Macho Man, is that you don't need to play it perfectly. In fact, you can lose up to 4 frames and still end up tying the TAS. To understand why, we need to head into phase 2. Phase 2 begins with a buffered face punch, courtesy of intercepting Macho's mini spin, which messes up his guard. Here, Macho Man is winding up for his super spin punch, and he has two delays. We want the longer of the two delays, so we have some extra time to deal more damage, and that has odds of 50%. After the face punch, we launch another max damage star punch. Finally, to cap off this little section, we want to land another Dizzy Destroyer, getting a random star on the face punch. Just before Macho backs up, we can land one more left gut punch. Finally, Macho backs up to begin his super spin punch. During this backup, the clock gets rounded up to 32 seconds and stays frozen until Macho's final spin punch. It is precisely because of this clock rounding that we have 4 frames of leeway in phase 1. If we lost more than 4 frames in phase 1, then at this point in phase 2, the clock would be rounded to 33 seconds and the TAS would lose an entire second of in-game time. The amount of times Macho can spin is variable, but it's usually between 3 and 8. The TAS has Macho stop after the third spin and lands a star punch right into the back of Macho's head for max damage. If the final spin is ducked frame perfectly, we can save another whole second in phase 3 when there is another clock rounding. A frame perfect left quick dodge just won't cut it. Since it's impossible to know which spin Macho will stop on, your best bet is to always guess 3. The chance for him to stop on his third spin? Just 5 in 16. Phase 3 begins, and we launch a max damage star punch. This time, we need the short delay for Macho's super spin, which is 50% likely. Once again, we need Macho to stop on 3 spin punches, and we use our final star punch which connects for max damage, so that's another 5 in 16. To finish off the fight, we perform a delayed face punch which has a 3 frame window, courtesy of our frame perfect duck, and a final buffered face punch to get the third knockdown, with a time of 43.25. The odds for the TAS strat ultimately boil down to about 1 in 15,907. Before we even get into discussing the feasibility of this strategy, I want to mention that the odds aren't quite that bad. Remember at the end of Phase 1 how I mentioned you needed to perform a frame perfect intercept into Macho's punch which you would only do early enough 25% of the time? In actuality, you can instead raise his guard and perform a right gut punch, and this saves 4 frames which means that a human would only need to play phase 1 within 7 frames of perfect to remain tied with the TAS. The reason McHazard chose to do this frame perfect 1 in 4 punch in the TAS is because it still saves real time due to the different knockdown animation. So without that 1 in 4 punch, the odds now sit at around 1 in 3976. The current world record is held by JLet with a time of 45.25, exactly 2 seconds behind the TAS time. Both of those seconds were lost due to the clock rounding in Phase 2 and Phase 3. JLet was using a much more practical method to complete Phase 1, which can just barely get a 22 second knockdown with extremely tight execution, so one of those seconds is lost to the TAS there. In Phase 2, he does not perform a frame perfect duck on the final spin to score the knockdown, and the other second is lost there. So, can a human even pull the TAS of Super Macho Man off? Well, Phase 1 is the most complicated section of the fight, 3 frame perfect punches being necessary and complicated and awkward guard manipulations everywhere, and the odds are about 1 in 37. In comparison, JLet's Phase 1 requires no frame perfect inputs, and the odds are about 1 in 27. That all being said, in September of this year, Brandon De Silva became the first person to pull off the TAS Phase 1, which he managed to do off a save state, so the world record time can definitely come down to a 44. The real issue with tying the TAS comes in Phase 2. This frame perfect duck under the final spin punch is damn near impossible for a human to pull off. In my recreation of the TAS, I use the more intuitive human approach which is to perform a slow dodge into a quick dodge and then the frame perfect duck. This method has one big issue though. In order to perform the frame perfect duck, your preceding quick dodge also needs to be frame perfect on the previous spin. The hard part is, actually performing the inputs. You would need to press left, up, down, down in a manner that is probably too difficult for a human to do with a conventional controller grip. 
Then there is the TAS method. While less intuitive, it might end up being more practical for humans to pull off. It's just simply three frame perfect ducks in a row, which can be done by performing a down press with a little leeway, followed by five frame perfect down presses. And that caps off that section. Mr. Sandman, Bold Bull 1 and Super Macho Man teeter on the edge of what a human may accomplish sometime in the future. The same cannot be said for the next section. These final five fights sit comfortably away from human perfection, beyond the reaches of any mortal gamer. It seems absurd to even dwell on these fights, explaining how to pull it off like the previous ones, but just to indulge you, I will try. And we are starting things off with the most execution heavy fight in the game, Mike Tyson. The Mike Tyson world record is one of the two most prestigious world records in Mike Tyson's punch out, with the other being the full game speed run. Both of these world records are currently held by some dude who calls himself Summoning Soul. There are no fancy guard manipulations and stars are unavailable until round two. So how does one beat Mike Tyson quickly? After dodging an uppercut, the player will want to punch on the same side as the uppercut. This is called a proper punch, and it deals 5 damage. On the second hit, you need to delay your face punch by exactly 8 frames, and this will also deal 5 damage. If we punch on the wrong side, our first punch will only deal 1 damage, and if we do our second punch too early, it will also do only 1 damage. If we execute perfectly in phase 1, getting 9 frame perfect punches and 1 early punch, and Tyson doesn't give us the dreaded 8 second delay, we can score our first knockdown in under 1 minute. Similarly, in phase 2, if Tyson throws 6 uppercuts and we land 5 frame perfect punches and 1 early punch, we can score our second knockdown before Tyson's pattern change at 1 minute 30. In the last section of the fight, Tyson is only throwing hooks, and the best way to deal damage is dodge and throw a single punch on the last possible frame before he would block, dealing 5 damage. If your punch is too early, you'll be able to counter him twice, but for only 2 damage apiece. Since Tyson in phase 3 has 40 health, you would need to hit 8 out of 8 frame perfect punches in order to score the fastest knockdown. If a person manages to execute a perfect phase 1, perfect phase 2, and perfect phase 3 all in one fight, this becomes known as a perfect Tyson fight. Over the years, nearly two dozen people have managed to record at least one perfect Tyson fight. Theoretically, if a human could perform all 22 frame perfect punches every single time, a perfect Tyson fight could be achieved about 50% of the time, courtesy of that 8 second delay. Way up at the top of the leaderboard is Salt, with a time way out ahead of everyone else. Getting a time under 205.25 is only possible if you manage to get a Phase 3 uppercut. The Phase 3 uppercut is reserved only for those Tyson fights that were destined to be. In order to get one, you would need to execute Phase 1 and Phase 2 perfectly, so that's 14 frame perfect punches. But that's not all. You also need a very good pattern from Tyson, one where Tyson throws almost all of his punches instantly, one after the other. But still, that is not enough. You need to dodge all of his uppercuts extremely tightly, to the point you are almost getting hit by them. If you can do this, you will get your second knockdown by a mid-125, and Tyson will begin phase 3 with an uppercut, just before the clock ticks over to 1 minute 30. That extra uppercut saves about 5 seconds, and while there have been 5 of us that have managed to get that phase 3 uppercut, Salt has been the only one to finish one with perfect execution, with his fastest time being a 200.97. At the end of the Mike Tyson fight, the game does not give you the decimals as it skips directly into the ending credit scene after your hard fought victory. So how do we know that Salt's fight was a .97? Well, Salt was recording his fight on a VHS tape, which records every single frame that was output by his NES. By having access to every single frame, we can use a tool developed by OmniGamer called the Tyson Finder, which is essentially a very fancy frame counter that can find the decimals for us, but only if we have access to every single frame. In Salt's fight, he managed to hit every single frame perfect punch, and his dodging and ducking was extremely good. For the time he got and his level of execution, he estimates a pattern like that would only come around at best once every thousand attempts. The time of 200.97 will surely be lowered in the future, as this fight is attempted far more than any other fight in the game. But as for matching the task time, let's see why that's just not happening.
With the inclusion of frame perfect dodging and ducking, the required amount of frame perfect inputs nearly doubles to go from a simple perfect fight to matching the TAS. In truth, there are three buffers that could be used in phase 3 which can eliminate three frame perfect punches, which brings the total number of frame perfect inputs down from 39 to 36. That all being said, there is nothing we can do about having to deal with getting the 1 in 153,661 odds. A sub 2 minute time perhaps, but not the TAS. With Tyson having the 5th worst odds required for matching the TAS, can you guess which fight has the 4th worst odds? It's Soda Popinski. If King Hippo was known as the first gatekeeper to your speedrun, Soda Popinski is undoubtedly the second. The strategy to a fast win is simple. Soda will begin each phase with a pair of hooks, which can be intercepted with a right face jab or cancelled with a right gut punch. After this, he has a 25% chance to loop back to hooks, which is really bad and can cost upwards of 10 seconds. The other 75% chance is to go into uppercuts, which is exactly what you want. By holding down, you can lock Soda into his crouching state. When Soda is in this position, he can be punched in the gut. This gut punch is very special. It sets a flag which tells the game that the next time Soda is hit with a star punch, he is to be instantly knocked down. Get lucky in all three phases by getting the uppercut pattern right away, and Soda can be beaten in under a minute. Getting 3 out of 3 uppercut patterns is certainly a good sign for your full game speedrun, but just getting that isn't nearly enough to set a world record time on this fight, let alone enough to match the TAS. Let's rewind back to the start to see exactly why. As I said before, Soda begins the fight with 2 hooks. The TAS cancels the first with a very special right gut punch. In order to save 6 frames, McHazard begins by holding up, raising Soda's guard. Up is then released and A is pressed to perform a right gut punch. Before the gut connects, Up is then repressed to make the gut punch misdirected. For some reason, this can cause Soda's move timer to keep ticking for 6 more frames, which means the gut punch can be thrown 6 frames earlier than normal. Can being the key word there, because this technique works just under a quarter of the time. The second of Soda's hooks also needs to be cancelled. Remember how I said before that we can only cancel them with a right gut punch? Well that's not entirely true. It is possible to cancel Soda's hook with a left gut punch. However, 25% of the time, the left gut punch will whiff and Soda will hit us with his punch. Since this punch is buffered and can't be performed any earlier, it does save a couple of frames. If you are wondering why the TAS doesn't cancel the first hook with a left gut, it could be but the punch would also have to be thrown a couple of frames later to compensate for its faster speed, so it wouldn't end up saving any time. Now, it's time for that uppercut pattern which occurs 75% of the time. However, I didn't mention before that there is a variable delay here, and we obviously want the fastest. Soda's move timer here is made up of two separate countdowns, the second countdown timer beginning when the first ends. Each move timer has two possible configurations, with each of them having 50% odds, combining for four possible delays at 25% apiece. With Soda ducking down for his first uppercut, we want to lock him down by pressing down so he can land our gut punch. However, this isn't quite what the TAS does. The frame that gets checked to make sure down is being held is deceptively late. So in fact, this left gut punch needs to be thrown before locking Soda down. Just before it connects, now down is pressed to complete the maneuver. This punch in and of itself is quite tricky to pull off. However, back in 2015, Jack Wedge came up with a move called the Screwdriver, which is a buffer which executes the punch on the optimal frame every single time. Before we can launch our star punch for the knockdown, we need to cancel the second uppercut. By performing the same guard manipulation trick as we did to cancel the hook early, we can also cancel the uppercut early, and likewise, this trick works just under 25% of the time. Because our goal in each phase is to get to the first uppercut as fast as possible and set the flag for the instant knockdown, phases 2 and 3 are very similar to phase 1, with the only difference being on the second uppercut. Instead of cancelling it, we need to intercept it with a left gut punch for a guaranteed star. The chance for the intercept is exactly the same as the early cancel, just under 25%. These odds are completely horrendous, and there are over a dozen frame perfect button presses and releases needed to make this fight happen. However, there is one thing we can do to make the odds a lot better. 
Remember how I said there were 4 delays for the uppercut pattern, all occurring at 25% apiece? That is true, but we can do something to improve that. Lucanda and Zoxox found that if you got the 16 frame delay on the first timer, if you also held right, the input for the screwdriver for exactly 16 frames, you could guarantee the second delay timer would be 8 frames. If this technique is used all 3 times in the fight, the odds end up being 8 times better, bringing them up to 1 in 202,357. In April of 2020, Luke Handel set an incredible world record time of 45 seconds flat. Luke began his fight very similarly to the TAS, cancelling the first hook early and cancelling the second with a left gut punch, saving a maximum of 8 frames. From then on, he doesn't gamble on any more random punches. Because the TAS uses these random punches to get stars in unnatural spots in the fight, Lucando instead opted to go for a couple of punches intercepting the second hook in both phases 2 and 3. Both of these punches aren't featured in the TAS, but they can be landed earlier than normal by releasing up one frame after the punch goes off. Exceptionally tricky stuff. All in all, the odds for Luke's fight only tally up to about 1 in 103. A far cry from the TAS odds of 1 in 202,357. Things are only going to get worse from here. A lot worse. Beginning with our old friend, Piston Honda. Here it is, the fight I fear tassing the most. When I began making this video, I also recreated all of McHazard's fights, so I could display all of the damage values, how much health the opponents have left, and to get a much better understanding of how the TAS worked. Of the 14 fights in the game, Piston Honda 1 was by far the hardest of them all. Honda 1's behaviour is like no other in the game. Here is a simplified diagram I made that doesn't include all of the random delays he has. After the top two left boxes, it is extremely easy to get completely lost in his pattern. The three bottommost boxes I like to call Punch 1, Punch 2, and Punch 3. As you can see, Punch 1 has a chance to just not occur and start the timers for Punch 2. Punch 2 can just loop back to Punch 1 and Punch 3 can loop back to Punch 2. It's complete anarchy. And this is why, even though I knew all of the fancy punches that are needed to tie the TAS, it still took me over 2 hours to match McCazard's time of 36.97. I'm not going to show you that fight though. A little after the TAS was published, McCazard found an alternate strategy that was tied to the frame with the original fight, and the best thing was, the odds were better. A lot better. So with my new knowledge on the secrets of Honda 1, I went through some archived Discord chats and re the new fight. The task begins by throwing three buffered face punches right through Honda's guard. Each one of these punches has odds of just under 1 in 4. Then, a buffered star punch is launched which connects right into Honda's wiggling eyebrows early, which deals maximum damage. A second star punch is then performed which needs to be delayed by 4 frames. This star punch connects into the first frame of his jab, dealing 16 damage. If you don't delay at least 4 frames, then the punch connects into eyebrows late, for a measly 12 damage. Now, we need to buffer another face punch to connect right through Honda's guard, which is just under 25% likely. That's not all though, because if Honda hooks, which is 75% likely, then he is guaranteed to block our punch. So this punch only connects just under 1 16th of the time. The punch coming up next is the least likely one to land in the game. In order to pull it off, you first need to get the execution right, you need to delay your star punch by exactly 5 frames. This is because as you press start, you also need to press up to manipulate Honda's guard, and Honda's guard has a 5 frame lag time. Now, if we take a look back to this diagram, we need punch 1 to be nothing, and punch 2 needs to be an uppercut. But before punch 1 happens, we need the correct delay as well. There are 4 delays here at 25% apiece. And right before punch 2, you guessed it, 4 delays here at 25% apiece. Multiplying all these odds up, this punch has only a 1 in 114 chance of landing correctly, and in practice, you would only have 2 frames to pull it off. The next punch is pretty easy to execute, it's just a buffered face punch. Unlike the others which had odds of 63 and 256 for going straight through his guard, this one intercepts an uppercut. Since our previous punch intercepted an uppercut on punch 2, we need Honda's pattern to move from punch 2 to punch 3, which has odds of 3 in 4. Also, we need punch 3 to be an uppercut, which has odds of 3 in 8, 
giving this punch odds of 9 in 32. To cap off the end of the phase, it's just another simple buffered star punch. All that needs to happen for the RNG is for punch 3 to loop back to the very start of the fight, which has odds of 5 in 8. This star punch will land into Honda's jab, dealing 16 damage. Since Little Mac is still at full health, Honda will get up here on a 1 count, and since we have 1 star in the bank, Phase 2 is just a simple buffered star punch for the instant knockdown. Phase 3 is where things get worse again. Firstly, you need a good refill which only occurs 3 eighths of the time. The phase begins with one random face jab right through Honda's guard. Then, you need to delay 11 frames to land a star punch into the first frame of Honda's eyebrows wiggling for maximum damage. This is done earlier than normal by also performing a guard manipulation which keeps the move timer ticking for longer than normal. A buffered face punch is launched into more wiggling eyebrows, intercepting Honda's second jab. Normally, this punch would land just under 25% of the time, but since our previous punch messed up Honda's guard, this punch is now guaranteed. We are now only one max damage star punch away from victory. Honda has to not throw a hook here, which is 25% likely. Then, we must delay 5 frames for our star punch and perform another guard manipulation to make it max damage. There is a whole range of things that can happen here, but it boils down to odds of 23 in 32. This brings the final odds for the fight to just 1 in 42,568,939, with just one frame to spare. The current world record for this fight is 3 seconds behind the TAS at a 39.97 set by Nolan in July of this year. The conventional strategy for this world record was significantly different from the TAS, and only had odds of about 1 in 200. That strat had a rather safe opening, with 3 guaranteed right gut punches which went through every single time, so long as you performed a guard raise at the start of the fight, and then hit your first right gut punch without losing more than 3 frames. Nolan took that strategy to the next level by implementing the TAS opening. By buffering 3 face punches in the opening, the odds were brought from 1 in 200 down to nearly 1 in 13,000, but this made the execution essentially free, and it saved 15 frames. Two fights to go. Let's get into it. It's Don Flamenco 2. Don Flamenco 2 can be an absolute game changer in full game runs of Mike Tyson's punch out. In phase 1, you land a whole bunch of gut punches which can give you random stars. This isn't a strategy you go out of your way to use to save a dead run. This is the optimal strategy, even if you end up not getting any random stars. Unfortunately, this is a pretty common occurrence, because even with the most high level version of the strategy, which has 9 opportunities for random stars, the random stars are only awarded 6.25% of the time. When the clock gets to 1 minute 30, Don enters his defensive state and you have to force him to retaliate, which is random by the way, in order to do damage. Without random stars, it's impossible to beat him before then, and your time will very likely end up being between 140 and 150, or possibly worse. Every now and then though, the RN gods will bless your fight with random stars, and about 1 in every 50 fights will end in the mid 120s. Just getting random stars isn't quite all there is to Don Flamenco 2 though, because he also has random refills. When you knock Don down for the first time, he can get up with 3 different amounts of health. Half of the time, he will get up with the largest refill, 80 health. 3 eighths of the time, he will get up with the middle refill, which is 72 health. And lastly, if you are really lucky, just 1 eighth of the time, you can get the low refill, which is just 64 health. The phase 3 refill isn't random, and he always gets up with 56 health. Except that's only true if Little Mac has full health. By having Mac not at full health, the phase 3 refill becomes random. Half of the time he will get up with 80 health, 3 eighths of the time he will get up with 72 health, and if the gods shine down upon you, 1 eighth of the time he will get up with just 40 health. Pressing select for Don 2 to reduce Max health before the fight is considered such a risky strategy, it's reserved only for people going for the most insane times, as getting the low refill is much less important than getting lucky stars. But the TAS can easily do that, and more. This fight will never happen. Before the fight begins, select is pressed, cause you can be damn sure we want that 40 HP refill for phase 3. 
Don's first jab is dodged, and we land a delayed right gut punch for a guaranteed star. Immediately following this, we land another right gut punch, intercepting a jab and get our first 1 in 16 random star, and then land a face punch, intercepting Don's hook, getting another 1 in 16 random star. Two star punches are buffered one after the other as Don2 just stands there waiting for his move timer to tick to zero. Right after the second star punch, we land two more right gut punches, intercepting two more jabs and getting two more 1 in 16 random stars. With Don at exactly 27 health remaining, we perform a perfect quick dodge and land a star punch which deals maximum damage, sending Don to the canvas. This final hook could be ducked to save one frame, however, ducking or blocking Don's attacks actually messes up his pattern and he attacks a lot slower. This is also why we dodge the first punch of the fight. Dodging a punch puts Don into his more aggressive pattern. Don gets up with a 64 HP refill in phase 2, which is 1 in 8, and then it's business as usual. Intercept his jab, this time getting a guaranteed star. His second jab is dodged and we land a stun punch and then star punch dealing maximum damage. The third jab is intercepted with a left gut punch for a fifth 1 in 16 random star. And with Don once again at 27 health and one max damage star punch away from knockdown, we duck under his hook, intentionally reverting Don to his less aggressive pattern and scoring the knockdown and getting that precious 1 in 8 40 HP refill. Phase 3 is simple. With Don at such low health, we can just open the phase with a buffered star punch which intercepts his jab. Since the duck at the end of the previous phase put Don in his less aggressive pattern, there is a short delay before his hook. We delay our final star punch by exactly 7 frames, intercepting the first possible frame of the hook, finishing with a final time of 58 seconds flat, and odds of 1 in 67,108,864. <laughs> yeah, if only the odds were actually that good. Throughout the fight, there were 6 locations where I neglected telling you about the random event. If we go back to the very start of the fight, after landing our first right gut punch, in the TAS, the following right gut punch and face punch are buffered. To land your punch every single time, you must delay them by 5 frames. Normally, humans won't buffer these punches, the risk reward isn't worth it. If you try to land the punch in this early 5 frame window, Don will block just over 50% of the time. This fight features 6 of those punches, which now puts the odds at 1 in 4,501,915,640. So, who has come closest to the TAS? Over the years, the Don 2 world record has received, one might describe as, an undeservedly large amount of attention within the community, mostly due to the low skill but high luck barrier. On December 24th, 2021, after grinding this fight for 3 to 4 hours nearly every single day for 3 years straight, Dave P4948 was able to cut the 1 minute 10 barrier and get a time of 109.97. In order for his fight to work, he needed both random stars from punches 2 and 3, which is 1 in 256. He then needed to get a random star within the next 3 opportunities, and he did so on the final one in the second punch of phase 2, and he needed both low 1 in 8 refills. The odds for this fight boiled down to 1 in 93,080. After that grind, Dave P says he is done. For now. And we're finally here. The worst fight out of all of them in the game. By a long shot. Bold Ball 2. When players learn this fight for the first time, it has very little RNG. There are no random stars, and there are no random refills. When you get to phase 2, you begin by launching a star punch into this move called the ear rub, which is completely standard and deals max damage. You then perform a face punch which gets blocked and bull retaliates. You can then land a gut punch for a guaranteed star, and this can be repeated almost as much as you want. You then use the star punches to knock bull down, since he can't be knocked down any other way other than countering the bull charge. These retaliations from bull are random though, but the odds are heavily in your favour. He will retaliate 87.5% of the time, and over the course of the whole fight, you only need 3 retaliations, so luck is on your side. Until you need to start getting really fast times on this guy. At the top level, there are more advanced strategies to bring your time down, if you are willing to risk some potential time loss. Instead of forcing the retaliations, if you raise Bull's Guard beforehand, 
you can attempt a misdirected gut punch which is performed by pressing up just after the gut punch has already gone off. This punch can get you a guaranteed start without having to dodge the retaliation punch and it saves 3 seconds. The downside is, it only lands just under 25% of the time and if bull blocks, it costs you 1 second. Since the risk reward is almost completely even, the best runners will attempt to chain as many of these misdirected gut punches together so they can immediately chase their loss, like a mad gambler. But that's nothing, nowhere near anything close to what the TAS does. This strategy is so unlikely and saves so little time, humans will never even attempt it. The fight begins with Bull performing 4 consecutive rolling jabs. Humans will dodge them and then hit a 3 frame punch. It's a little complicated to explain why, but two of the rolling jabs also get cancelled, so you will only ever see two punches here. Following this, a star punch is launched into the ear rub. The TAS doesn't do this. Instead, it pretends like Bull has no defense at all. It launches four face punches directly through the four rolling jabs and launches a star punch into the ear rub. Each one of these punches has only a 15 in 256 chance to land. We are only 12 seconds in and the odds are already nearly at 1 in 85,000. And then there's another, and another, and another. This one is actually delayed by 2 frames because Ball has a pattern change at 20 seconds in. It saves a little time by getting this move timer ticking as soon as possible. And then there's another, and another. Finally, Bull is at low enough health where we wait for his first hook, duck, counter and star punch for the first knockdown. Phase 2 begins with Bull doing that ear rub, so the TAS just launches a star punch into it for max damage. Two more random face jabs are sent straight through Bull's guard, and then it's just a matter of ducking the hooks, countering and star punching for the second knockdown. Phase 3 is similar to Phase 2. Star punch into the ear rub, three random face jabs, Duck the hook, stun, and star punch for the knockdown, finishing with a final time of 108.48 and odds of nearly 1 in 178 quadrillion. It's very safe to say that no one will ever even attempt this strategy, or even take small subsections of it to use in world record attempts. Aside from the first 4 random face jabs that intercept the 4 rolling jabs, each face jab can be replaced by a misdirected gut punch which is 4 times more likely to land and only loses a couple of frames each. On September 14th, 2021, Hefeman82 set the current world record with a time of 113.97. Hefe's fight featured the standard opening and then landed 2 misdirected gut punches. He then forces Bull to block which lets the timer tick over the 20 second mark, ensuring Bull won't start a rolling jab before 20 seconds, costing him time. The TAS Phase 1 has nearly 1 in 123 billion odds to work properly, and finishes with a clock at 31 seconds. Hefe's Phase 1 is only 2 seconds slower, but the odds are just 1 in 17. Hefe lands the next 3 misdirected gut punches on the first possible opportunities, landing 5 out of 5 in total for the fight, bringing the odds up to 1 in 1108, and some tight execution to boot. It's likely this fight will be improved sometime in the future, as there is a strategy that is just as fast and more likely to work by removing one of the random misdirected gutters, but instead requires you to hit two frame perfect punches at the start of the fight with some guard manipulation. And that's everything that is needed to be done to match the tasks on every single fight. In contrast, the odds to beat the game in as few punches as possible was about 1 in 2.5 billion. The odds to pull off the full TAS speedrun of the game are about 1 in 5.2 times 10 to the power of 58. Those odds are pretty unlikely, and it's safe to say that the perfect Mike Tyson speedrun will never happen. But that's still very far from the worst thing I've ever had to TAS. Maybe I'll make a video on that one day. Thanks for watching.